Okay, so what we're going to be going through is we're now going into chapter 10 here. Chapter 10. That's 11. I know that. I was just getting annoyed that I wrote over here and got distracted. I do know how to write numbers. There we go. Chapter 10. That works. And what is it talking about? Well, it's talking about compressible flow, specifically going through nozzles and diffusers. Now, why do we care about this? Well, short answer, wind tunnels. Seriously, supersonic wind tunnels. But it doesn't just end there. It's for a lot of other things too, but one big aspect of its wind tunnels, also rockets. We want to have this compressible flow that's going through nozzle and diffuser. So in a wind tunnel, I might have a section that looks something like this. It goes down, it comes back up, it goes down, it comes back up, and usually there is some sort of testing window, okay? There you are, hi! In the distance looking through the window. Cool? Painted glass so you know you're not being blown away by the wind tunnel. Now, Johan Bernoulli, yes, that Bernoulli, um, a long, long, long time ago, so this is in 1743. Yeah, a ways away. That number is wrong. Sorry, that's the wrong date. That is the that is a hundred percent the wrong date. My goodness, give me one second there. That is, they going crazy with this. I think that's supposed to be nineteen forty three. Nope, nope, I was right. That was right. Okay. Okay, sorry about that. Had to, had to. There's actually 17 few Bernoullis, but still. By the way, Joan Bernoulli. Um, he was having this idea. He was saying that he'd been struggling for a long time when he was thinking about fluid mechanics, and he was trying to figure out how to apply dynamics to fluids, so like dynamics to fluids. So, with that, he knew that with solids, it's pretty easy. So for solids, dynamics is really simple. I toss the ball, you know, I have gravity pulling it down, I had some initial force, I can then figure out its velocity and then I can figure out where it's going to land a little bit later. Okay, that's not too hard. If I have a little pin right here and I have something that spins around it, I apply a force, I can tell that's going to spin. But fluids, are different. If I have a fluid and I apply a force to it, well, what is that going to do? And so eventually Johan had this idea. He said, okay, well, if I'm talking about things going through a nozzle because that's where we're actually studying the flows, I can't just care about it in the big sections. I have to care about it in the little sections too. And it turns out that the properties of the flow are going to be most affected by the throat. So this was his big idea. This is big idea all the way back in 1743. Um, and so from that, you know, we're going to be developing all of chapter 10, okay? All of it. Ah. So let's draw out our outline and we'll keep on going through this. Let's see here. Yep. So first off, we're going to be developing our equations for one quasi-one-dimensional flow. Remember, why is it quasi? Because we're not talking about the boundary layer here. And so since we're not talking about the boundary layer, the change in properties from top to bottom inside of your wind tunnel is fairly minor, especially with supersonic flow. So that's number one. That's what we're going to start with. After that, we're going to kind of split. We're going to talk about nozzles and diffusers. 
and then we're going to go into supersonic wind tunnels, which use those nozzles and diffusers. So come back together again for supersonic wind tunnels. Not anything too crazy here, but necessary just the same. So first off, why do we care? Well, reason we care is because if I'm going to go into space, okay, so here, me, here I am going into space. Woo! Let's make it look cool. There we go. Beautiful. Blasting off again. Okay, I'm going to the moon or something. Well, I don't want to go into a rocket that I haven't tested yet. So we need to test supersonic vehicles. Okay. The second thing is, if I want to move supersonically, then I have to be able to accelerate the flow. Okay, and if I want to do that most efficiently, I need to go to supersonic speeds. So that brings me to an issue. If I have a nozzle and there is a shock wave right there at the end, well, it might be going supersonic before that, but it's now subsonic after that, and that is going to affect how much thrust I can have going out of my um, nozzle or out of my engine. And so we need to care about these diffusers and these nozzles because we want to move supersonically and we want to know what happens when we move supersonically. Okay, so what's going to happen to us and also how are we going to get to those speeds? Both of those things are going to be really important for us and that is the purpose of this chapter. Okay, that is the purpose of this chapter.